The loop. The loop. You have the divine spark. The loop. Do or do not. There is no try. The loop. Hey there, this is Misha, and welcome to episode number seven of The Loop, the podcast where I interview career experts and coaches to uncover their advice on everything from interview tips to finding more meaning at work and much more. Today's guest is Arne Blom, who's a certified career coach and former executive who's held marketing sales and general management positions at L'Oreal. Johnson and Johnson and a few other companies. He's a really interesting guy, and he has lived in many countries, including Norway, uh, the UK, Mexico, Brussels, Portugal, France, Hong Kong, and most recently in Thailand. Today's conversation was all about networking and how to start networking to find a job especially if you are starting from scratch and are just trying to build your resume and just shoot out a bunch of job applications, you probably won't get very far uh, and it's very frustrating. So Arne basically maps out his technique that he teaches people on how to come up with the right list of people to reach out to and companies and how to approach that conversation. He is really passionate about this topic and give some really specific examples and tips. I also share some of my stories. So I think if you are at the beginning of your job search, especially this is going to be very useful. So if that sounds interesting to you, then I think this will be a treat. Hey, Arne, thanks for joining me. Hello, Misha. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, man, I'm uh, excited for our chat today. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about networking and how to do that. Um, Before we get into the conversation, I wanted to get a little bit more context about your background because we were just chatting before and it sounds like you've traveled and lived in many, many places. So could you share a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Um, actually, now I'm, I, I counted the other day, I'm, I'm living in my ninth country right now in Thailand and Bangkok. So, <laughs> wow. Um, I, I think we're going to stop there. We'll see. But, you know, uh, uh, that's, that's how life um, went on for, for me and my family. Um, I'm from Norway originally, born in Oslo in Norway, but also half French. So uh, the French part is, is quite important in, in the sense that my wife is French and the kids were born in France. So we lived uh, in Paris for a while, and then mm-hmm. with job, basically, you know, around the world, Mexico, Belgium, Portugal, Hong Kong for seven years before landing in Bangkok. So there you go, uh, world, uh, worldwide wow. citizen. <laughs> so is Southeast Asia relatively new to you, or you said you were you were in Hong Kong for a bit? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so um, even when I was based in in Europe. I, I used to travel for work quite extensively to, to Asia and China. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. uh, and then, as you just said, yeah, seven years based in Hong Kong, traveling all around the Asia Pacific. So, um, yeah, I, I was uh, yeah. terrible on on uh, on uh, CO2 for, for, <laughs> for a long time with a lot of a lot of traveling by air. But, you know, uh, with the pandemic, yeah. I hope we can but- uh, we can uh, bring that to a a more reasonable level. Well, they have they have the carbon footprint filter, CO two emissions filter on on Google flights now, which I think you've probably seen. Ah, cool. Yeah. So whenever you're filtering, you could every single flight you can see exactly how much uh, CO two they're going to be emitting, and uh, like some flights are like awful. You know, you're yeah. like, oh, I feel so bad yeah, flying yeah. on this plane. Um, but but yeah. Anyways, uh, so yeah. So it sounds like you've traveled a lot. And then in terms of your uh, work experience, I mean, I know you've worked in in several different companies and uh, so some senior level roles. What what is? Can you tell me about like the most recent experience, like the last few yeah, years? Yeah, what, sure, what have sure. you been so, up to? Yeah, in in Hong Kong, I was basically uh, um, VP in charge of uh, Asia Pacific for uh, for a company that was part of uh, Colgate Palmolive. Um, but in the skincare area, so no, not in personal care, but uh, not the toothpaste. Yeah, no, exactly. 
Uh, so you are basically um, uh, skincare, beauty, dermatology, uh, those areas. That's been all my career since mm -hmm. the start in, uh, at L'Oreal for uh, many, many years ago. Um, yeah, so got it, got yeah, it. Was a great time, um, and then I found out I had to do something more um, uh, purposeful for me uh, than just selling. Mm -hmm. You know, not just selling, but selling more jars of, of, of creams and stuff that people have so much of from <laughs> before. And um, a very long story short, that's how I became a, a coach. So now I'm helping people to basically be what they want to be and um, I'm trying to make a, uh, a small impact, small co contribution to people being uh, happy at work. So um, that's also why I'm here. I love that. Yeah. Wonderful. So, so let's talk a little bit about networking and what this really means. So I, I was a recruiter for several years. And so I, I think I have an idea of what networking is and I'm pretty good at it. But uh, why is this why, why is this the topic you wanted to discuss? Like, why is this important to you right now? Well, Michelle, I think that first of all, this was something I learned at a, at a time when um, um, I needed to find out what, what I wanted to do in life, um, you know, work-wise. Mm -hmm. And I was hesitating mm -hmm. between basically two directions based on my previous mm -hmm. exp uh, experience. I was, at the time, I was maybe, uh, you know, early 30s or something. So I, I had some years of experience, but but still uh, a long career ahead. I wanted to, to build in the right direction. And, um, and you know, I'm, I'm not going to talk, talk too much about myself, but basically that was a, a great help in order to um, meet people I wouldn't have been able to meet otherwise, you know, uh, without network. Mm -hmm. So that was an impact. And now, um, as I, you know, I told you about my, my desire to help people, uh, this is something I'd like to share so that more people can benefit from it and uh, so they can find their dream, dream job or, or do what, you know, what, what, what's best for them in life. Absolutely, yeah. So you, you've, you've had your own experience uh, you know, in your past, past roles yeah. with networking and that's allowed you to move, move further and meet, meet the right people, land certain jobs. Uh, I, I think, I mean, well, one, one thing is networking is, it's just such a, such an old sort of term, right? I mean, networking, it's, it's, I mean, pe people, people know what networking is. Uh, there's tons of articles, there's tons of books online about networking. So I'm trying to find out what, what has changed? Like what, what new things do we have to add to this conversation about, uh, about networking and, and then maybe, sorry, that that's one big question, uh, but also maybe you can define it in your own terms and like sort of what you mean, because there's probably different definitions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thinking about, you know, for, for, for our interview, thinking about this, I thought, well, networking basically is just uh, getting access to people um, that you don't know through people, you know, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's networking uh, to me. Mm -hmm. um, some people think about networking okay. as, you know, meeting a lot of people, you know, going to an event somewhere where they have maybe, you know, an industry event or something, and there's, you know, hundreds of people and you give out all your, your business cards in one evening and you say, oh, I was great at networking. Uh, to me, that's not networking. That's just, you know, um, well, if, if you like it, I'm, I'm introvert, by the way. So I'm not very comfortable at, you know, events like that and um, come into this big room with a lot of people that everyone seems to know each other and you feel, oh, I may be the only one that doesn't know anyone here. So um, I tend to kind of stay in the corner or something. But um, usually anyone being, you know, introverts, extroverts, anyone um, should be comfortable having, uh, you know, a conversation like the one we have now, you know, one-to-one. -one. Um, mm -hmm. And usually what's blocking people is, is the initial stage, but we'll talk more about that later. Um, so, um, so yeah, basically, you know, um, getting to know people that you wouldn't have access to otherwise, uh, that's, that's, yeah, that, that's a really broad and, and good definition, I think, because like you said, going into an event with lots of people is, it's not something I really enjoy either. I mean, oh. it's something I had to do a lot when I was a recruiter, but I would always be pretty, pretty exhausted and. My, my strategy was just to go in and try and talk to one or two interesting people and like just continue talking to them the whole time. Otherwise, it would be too tiring. But but you're saying that that's just like one one way to go out there. Obviously, it's it's not uh, it's it's not the definition of networking going into a crowded room with a bunch of people, right? No, exactly. Um, so um, 
you know the yeah so so if you if you know what you are looking for um uh, you 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 have to uh, target specific people but i'll talk more about that when we get to you know um exactly how the different steps uh, how to do networking properly sure um so uh, sure. so yeah let's, let's okay. get back to that later okay okay and and so the the way you defined it I, there's sort of a purpose in there an implied purpose that you're getting, you know, you're getting in touch with this person so you can ask them something. Uh, I think we're probably talking here about finding a, a job, right. Or applying yeah. for a job, but what, what are, what are the other, is that the main thing or are there other sort of reasons? Yeah. So, um, you know, I think not many people realize that um, when they're looking for a job, uh, if you're only replying to uh, job postings, you know, whatever the, you know, shape or form. It's you know, now it's mainly you know online platforms like JobsDB and others. Um, you're only attending one third of the available jobs, right? Only mm -hmm. one third is posted. The rest is not posted. Two thirds of all jobs are not posted online. So you 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 know you, you wouldn't find them if you, if you even if you were looking. So another third is um, through uh, headhunters basically, and the last third through uh, networking. And the networking part is gaining more and more importance in, you know, um, percentage wise, um, the more you, you're, you know, the higher up you are in the hierarchy. So for executive jobs, uh, almost all the jobs are, are uh, you know, uh, found through networking. Um, mm. and, and yes, you can use it for other things than looking for a job, obviously. Um, I wasn't, I didn't do any networking uh, when I was young. I had no idea what it was and how to do it. And then, you know, I, I was taught this method, which uh, worked so, so well, and I've used, you know, in, in all the years since then. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and now I'm using it to, well, actually, right now I'm using it to find new clients. But, uh, you know, in the meantime, when I was in my um, executive career, I would use it to, you know, benchmark, get um, industry information, um, meet people that I was interested in for whatever reason. So you can have different objectives. Um, and uh, the thing is just sure. to, you know, meet with people that can, can give you something. Uh, but you have to give something in return. And, and that's where people get stressed and mm -hmm. panic because if, especially if, if you're a young uh, person, you know, what can I bring to the mm -hmm. table to this whatever executive I want to meet? And, uh, uh, but um, but yeah, it's, it, it works very very well. Got it. So jobs are the main thing. Maybe we can stick to that in our conversation for now because it's, sure. it's 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 pretty tangible. Yeah. But there's, there's obviously other other purposes, and it sounds like you have this 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 technique, which I guess you're going to share uh, okay. that that has been effective for you. So other than what we just talked about, are there other sort of misconceptions that people have when it comes to networking as you see it? Yeah, I think, um, I think people, uh, and, and, you know, and rightfully so, and, and it's, it's, it's normal uh, to, to be afraid. Uh, you know, a lot of people are afraid to network. Mm -hmm. uh, they're afraid of being rejected. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the biggest mistake of all is when you're looking for a job, People say, oh, say, oh, well, but if I do networking and I, you know, get in touch with uh, who whatsoever and I'm asking for a job, they'll just, you know, uh, tell me, no, we don't have any. And then that's it. Or talk to HR, you know, and that's how it works. If you do uh, ask for a job, uh, most of the time, um, unless you're fantastically lucky, so that's an ex exception we won't talk about here, but. You know, most of the time you'll be redirected to HR and then you just end up with a CV in a, you know, a bunch of other CVs. And that's not even read by a person mm -hmm. anymore. You know, that goes to, a, to yeah. a machine that, you know, copies everything. And then you have AI uh, handling all of that. Um, so, so you have to avoid that at all costs. So my, my first tip is to mm -hmm. not ask for a job, um, but you, you present mm -hmm. a project, which is your next job. It's 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 a way of avoiding a touch of subjects, and um, people are very actually um, happy to uh, to share their experience, and they're actually um, 
you know, they, they feel valued, even if you, you as someone at a lower uh, level of, of um, uh, you know, in hierarchy, uh, if you're mm-hmm. contacted someone, um, maybe a GM of, of a company or something, um, and yeah, they, they feel flattered, actually, that you ask them for, for their advice as you think of them as a, as a thought leader. And um, mm-hmm. so people are more than happy to, to share a little bit of their time. Um, uh, it's a lot of work because uh, people are busy and, you know, you're, you're not their, their priority. Uh, so don't be mm-hmm. discouraged if, uh, you know, you, you, you're in touch with someone and maybe you only get uh, um, an appointment two or three weeks down the road. Um, and then it's rescheduled two or three weeks later and then maybe a third time. But that's just how life is, um, and um, and and, and uh, you know, so it's a long-term um, uh, project. The fact of of doing networking and and finding a job that way, but it works every time. It works really well. So, so you mentioned a couple different things there. I just I just wanted to clarify. So the first thing you mentioned was sort of reaching out to someone, not asking for a job, but with a project. Yeah. And then the second thing you mentioned was more about asking for advice from someone that you consider a thought leader. Yeah. So are, 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 th- are these two separate things? Can you t- talk more about these techniques yeah, and, yeah. And, and how they work? Okay, so first little, um, uh, a very, very short little uh, story that uh, you know, most people have heard okay. about. Um, remember Alice in Wonderland? Yes, of yeah. course. <laughs> All right. So Alice goes you know, into the woods, get lost. She's in the, you know, in the, in the deep forest. And then uh, she comes to a crossroads uh, and uh, she sees an owl and she asks the owl, well, Mr. Owl, which way should I take? And um, he says, well, Alice, that depends on where you want to go. And she says, well, I don't know where I want to go. And then he replies, well, then it doesn't matter which way you take. So, you know, the, 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 the bottom line of this is, of course, if you don't know what you want or don't know who you want to meet, you're not getting anywhere with networking. All right. So the first thing you have to do uh, if you want a new job is to make a list uh, of companies that uh, that you're interested in and Mm -hmm. the list of the position of uh, the name and the position of the person that you want to talk to in those companies. And the person you want to talk to is the person that's going to be uh, your potential future boss. So the, the, you know, the level above whatever position you're looking for. So that's yeah, so, and you can find that easily now online with LinkedIn and other resources. Um, so, so um, uh, yeah, that's the first thing you have to do: make that list. Okay, people mm-hmm. um, usually have a kind of a uh, attitude towards job searching. They're they're reacting to things they see. Okay. Um, oh, so so this company you know is announcing they you want to hire whatever you know programmer or something. And, oh, that could be something for me, and I'm replying to that. So that's a reactive way of doing it. But if you're a proactive, you know, with networking, uh, you will be ahead of everyone because you're actually contacting the right people um, that might need someone like you without even having, you know, um, gotten all the way to posting a, 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 you know, a, a job online. And then, as we said, you know, two-thirds are not even posted. So, so it's, uh, it's a very efficient way of, of finding a job. So, so it's it sounds like you have to first of all define define what you're looking for. Yeah. You, you need some self awareness there, map it out a little bit, and yeah, you're right. I think a lot of people are just they're like browsing jobs. Yeah, and and they might have an idea yeah, no, of what they want, but maybe and, maybe and not. Some people, you know, I was talking about my own experience initially in this talk, saying that you know I had a moment in life I wasn't sure exactly which direction to go, so. Um, this method also helps um, if you're, you know, like Alice, you're stuck in the woods and you have uh, two trails. You don't know exactly which trail to, to, to take. You can explore yeah. both, okay? So you can have two projects, um, not more than two. Then it becomes, you know, uh, difficult. But, you know, you can have two different projects mm-hmm. that you want to explore and, um, and use your uh, or build your network in those two to Pre- pre- present the uh, you know the kind of job you want to do. You present yourself um, and ask for you know feedback. You know what do you think is this project something that you, know, you think is viable with you know you know with your experience 
uh, viable for someone like me. And, and there's a discussion about that, which is very, very um, candid. And, um, and, and it's, it's um, usually these discussions, are, you know, without any, um, uh, there's, there, there's, there's no tension because you're not there for a job. And that's how, you know, you made that clear when you make, made that appointment. I'm not looking for a job. I'm looking for feedback. So, okay. Okay. So let's get into that. Cause I, yeah, I don't, I don't have the punchline yet. Cause there, there's like, you made the list, right? Yeah. You've got the list of, 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 of companies and people, I guess, or not yet. Yeah. yeah. Like, t- companies tell me, walk me through and, it. and the, the people that are your future bosses compared to where you want to uh, work in that company. Okay. So you have to go on LinkedIn or wherever and find yeah. those specific individuals. Absolutely, yes. And of course, you okay. might not okay. know a single soul in that industry or uh, in these companies. Um, and, and that doesn't matter because networking works like, you know, you meet one people that you do know. Um, and mm-hmm. so the, 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 the next thing after the list, I'll come back to the, what you do next. But then the next thing you need to do after the list is make a pitch. Okay. So a um, couple of minutes, not more, of presentation of... Uh, First of all, of yourself, you know, who am I, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, your experience and your competencies. You know, what, 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 what am I good at and what can I offer the, uh, the, the company? And so this should be something you, you write down so you're sure the text, you know, works well and then you learn it by heart. And uh, so you can deliver it effortlessly and, and with a certain flow and, and, you know, a natural way of talking. And you can, you know, you can uh, practice that with your friends, your family, you know, whoever uh, that are not that important. And they can tell you what -hmm. they think, you know, if it works well. Mm -hmm. And then you start your real networking by people you do know. um, And you'd be surprised. I started my networking at the time with um, a product manager in the marketing department. So that's, you know, one level below the marketing director, which is one level below uh, the general manager. Okay, so I wanted a job um, as a um, one of my two projects that I had two at the time uh, was to be the export director of a company. So that means that I would be reporting to the general manager. So I had to develop my network two steps up in the hierarchy. And, you know, after a few months, I'd seen 50 GMs of all the major companies in um, skincare, luxury, uh, and everything in, in in France, you know, mainly in Paris, without knowing uh, anyone from, from the start. Um, I did get help also from uh, an ex-boss, uh, you know, who liked me, and he gave mm-hmm. me some, some nice contacts. So, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, I showed him the list. I said, yeah, I know this guy. You can call from my, from, from my part. So the third thing, so, mm-hmm. you know, you have the list, you have your pitch, and... Uh, you know, I'll, we'll talk more about how to get the, these appointments. But uh, at the end of the appointment, you have to ask for referrals. So mm-hmm. the, 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 the cool thing I talked about, people like to be flattered, but, you know, being thought of as thought leaders and uh, they like to give advice. But when you have a referral, it works every time. People don't refuse to talk to someone who comes from someone they know very well. Right? Mm-hmm. So these yep. referrals work. That's why you have to have the list. So you can call someone you want to meet uh, on behalf of someone they know. And even if you don't know them at all, you, and if you've met them only once, it still works very well. And, and, um, yeah, and we'll talk more about LinkedIn, but LinkedIn works still very well. It's, it starts to become more like social media now, like, like Facebook, but it's, yeah. it's, it's still very professional. It works you know, wonderfully well. Hmm. So, so yeah, so you, you've, you've made the list, you've uh, started to craft your pitch, and then you are from there reach, reaching out directly on LinkedIn or wherever, um, sort of a, a cold pitch. Yeah, so the, the important thing here is, um, you know, most of, especially young people, but most of us now, we, we don't use the phone anymore. I mean, we all, everyone has a phone, yeah. right? Uh, but we don't using it to, to call anyone. We're using yeah. it to, to, to browse, to, to, you know, surf on the internet, yeah. to whatever we do, to chat and so on. Um, and um, that's, 
that's a, a pitfall because it's very easy to ignore a text. It's um, it's very easy to politely even refuse or say no to a request, you know, uh, on an email or a chat or whatever it is. Um, so at some point, uh, you have to make that call, okay? And uh, so it can be a challenge, especially if you want to speak to managers or directors that have, you know, a certain uh, barrier uh, with uh, maybe a personal assistant that they have that, you know, filters the calls. Mm -hmm. But that's where your pitch and uh, your referral are important because the personal assistant is not there only to, you know, um, filter calls and, and, and unblock the ex access to, to their boss. A PA is there to help their bosses, you know, uh, be efficient. So if there's a request from um, some, someone that has a referral from someone they know, you can bet that they would want to know about it. So you have to help the PA sure. do their job by, you know, with this very short pitch, you can even make it even a, a few seconds just to explain what you want from uh, their boss. And you'll say, you know, I don't want, you know, I'm not looking for a job if the question is raised. I want to present a project that I have. And since, you know, this person is uh, considered one of the leaders in their industry, uh, you know, I really uh, value their feedback. And it works. They, they, they will accept that call. Uh, even if they you don't get the appointment, you know the next day, but but still, you'll okay. get that call. So this is this is this is still mysterious to me about what you're actually saying in the pitch. So so t talk to me more about that. Yeah. So so the the, the pitch is the presentation. Um, you know, which where where you talk about what you want to do. So in pr the project is just another word for the job you want to do. Okay, I want mm -hmm. to you know, develop software programs uh, in the hotel industry, or whatever, you know, for reservations mm -hmm. or something, you know. I want to develop a new bot program that actually works so people do have the, you know, uh, feeling they're talking to someone and not some uh, stupid bot that's asking the same question again, you know, that I typically run mm -hmm. into when I, when I get to the yeah. customer uh, department, you know, oh, I didn't understand your question, can you ask again? And then, uh, you know, you're running in circles. Yeah, that's very Whatever annoying. you want to do, you have something you want to work on, okay. and you think that would be exciting. You know that um, that you want to spend your next year, a few years. Okay. On. That's your project. Okay. okay. So that's what you want to do. So you can say that you know I want to work in this area, um, and um, you know I'd like to you know explain what I've been doing so far and see if there's you know uh, some advice and some feedback I can get from this and that person uh, in in that respect. Mm -hmm. And then people say, oh, you're looking for Got a it. job, right? And then, no, then you have to refuse. You know, no, I'm not looking for a job. You ha have to have the balls to say no, okay? No, I'm not looking mm. for a job yet. Uh, this is just a project I have, right? And that's even more credible if you're in a job already, okay? Because you can, it's easier to look for a job um, in terms of the pressure you, you put on yourself uh, if you're already in a job. Uh, but if, you, if, you, if you're without work and... Someone tells you, oh, so you're looking for a job. It's very, very tempting to say, um, yes, I'm actually. Oh, yeah, well, I'll put you through, uh, through to HR. Mm. Okay, so don't do that. So, yeah, that, that, that sort of makes sense. I'm starting to see, see what you're getting at here. I think it would be especially useful if that so-called project, so like, this is what you want to do, you know, you want to work on, um, you know, solving, um, solving the plastic waste issue in, in, in the oceans. And here is an idea on how to do that or something that you've been working on. It would be really powerful, I think, if it was like a tangible, like if you're a designer or developer, you've actually developed some sort of software or, yep. or some sort of prototype or something, yep. then you're actually going there with something tangible. But if you're not, right, if you're a sales or marketing person or um, PR person or, or whatever, you don't have an actual tangible thing to show this hiring manager potential hiring manager are you just going to them and saying hey like this is my passion this is what i want to work on uh do you have any feedback for me 
Like, I mean, it sounds a little bit weak. Like, I don't. It sounds a bit weird. What, what do you yeah, say? So, so, so um, what you do is you present yourself. Okay, you present your project, but you you present yourself. So, no, this is uh, okay. this is a few personal details that you know, like what we did in the, at the uh, start of this pod- podcast, mm-hmm. and then um, mm-hmm. you know uh, what you've been working on so far, and what you think you mm-hmm. can bring to the table in terms of competencies. Okay, a bit of about your attitude mm-hmm. and you know the the things that companies are interested in when they're hiring someone but you don't know right. who's hiring right you're doing this networking without knowing if the person you're you're meeting is actually uh, do have any needs in the in this area mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. the beauty about networking because since you don't know there's there's um you don't have any uh uh you know there's there's uh, there's no tension there's uh uh you know there's you don't. No, no one has to commit to anything. So mm-hmm. uh, usually the, these meetings are therefore um, quite, you know, not not really laid back because you would be a little bit nervous maybe if you talk to someone important. But sure. But anyway, that's that's normal. So um, yeah. So you you talk about what you what about yourself, and you know what what the values that you can bring, and uh, and then you just ask, you know. What do you think about my project uh, in relation to you know what I've just told you I, who I am, and um, and and asking that question brings uh, you know uh, starts the discussion, and then you also okay so- yeah sorry and then you also need to prepare questions okay so before you go to any any interview okay. you need to of course uh, you know go through the website of the company look through the profile of the, the the person you're meeting on LinkedIn so you have. Some idea, maybe of uh, some, you know, extra uh, um, extracurricular activities this person is doing. Maybe uh, working for a foundation or sports or whatever. Um, you know, oh, I saw you, you know, uh, playing football. You know, I, you know, played football too when I was uh, young. And uh, you know, what team are you? Whatever. You can do you do some some of these personal um, discussions too. So you create a little bit of that relationship, um, mm-hmm. and sure, yeah. and and that plus the referral. And, and, you know, you being a, a nice person, obviously, you know, uh, will create a level of trust that will mm-hmm. uh, enable you to, at the end of that meeting, show that list of persons uh, you want to contact and get more referrals from, from, the, uh, from the person you're meeting. So if you get at least two referrals every time, you know, for every meeting, mm-hmm. your network will grow. Mm-hmm. And 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 you'll end up, and even if the person doesn't know exactly those persons, they'll know someone you know uh, around that sphere. So you will be able to okay. step in, you know step different stones to get to the right persons. Okay, yeah, I want I want to jump back to that in a second. So that list you're saying you're you're showing them the list of of companies that you're interested in and also individuals that you want to meet. So maybe maybe they know someone. So you're showing this list to everyone you talk to. Yeah. And, um, but, but going back, just, just if I can reframe a little bit of what you said about the project, because it's still, it's still part of it is still a little bit unclear because I think if you're going in and, and basically introducing yourself, you're not talking about wanting a specific job, but you're saying, this is my passion. These are my skills. I think what you're really asking for is feedback from that person. You do, right? You, You do. So, so. I mean, it's it's. Everyone will understand that you're actually looking for a job, okay. Mm-hmm. But okay. The, but so it's a bit like the elephant in the room. So so, so the job seeking thing is the elephant in the room, but it it's mm-hmm. it's suitable for everyone. Not to mention it, okay, because mm-hmm. if you do mention it, it's you know. Uh, Chances are very high that you'll not get that interview or not that that in that meeting, mm-hmm. and mm. and it enables people to have almost like a peer to peer discussion uh, about uh, you know w- w- what your passion is or what your int- level of uh, your interest is in, in, in you know, professionally. Mm-hmm. Um, without that, um, uh, yeah, w- w- without that menace of, of uh, oh, I'm here to ask you to give me a job, right? So, and people don't like mm-hmm. that. They don't like to to. Um, so if you if you name it differently, if you name it, if you're talking about projects, talking about 
your passion in, in, in work life. Um, it's, it's a totally different discussion. Mm. And it, okay. it just works out very right, well so, that way. Right. So if you're not, if you're not coming off as desperate also, right, you're, you're desperately looking for a job, like, Hey, I want this job. I want to apply for it. I have the skills, please interview me. It works really well. Actually, it works really well if you have the exact skill set they're looking for. Well, the thing then you the, don't actually need that the, call, the, right? The, yeah. Well, the thing is, the thing is that, um, you, you know, in my experience, at least, if you if you let that shine through when you're asking for the appointment, you'll not get it. You you just won't get that appointment because, okay. especially people, you know, a little bit higher up in the in the in hierarchy. But I guess now even anyone. So they just have, don't have time for that, and it's not their job, right? HR is there to to receive job seekers and CVs and stuff, mm-hmm. but here you're in a different domain, right? You're in a domain of um, a professional exchange of point of views or, uh, over a subject, and mm-hmm. uh, and you're asking for someone with more experience than you about you know their feedback, and that's cool and that's mm-hmm. fine, and and people are happy to to give uh, you know to share their their knowledge in that respect. Got it. Got it. Can, can I can I share two two other examples really quickly, yeah. just to see if this also aligns with what you're saying, or maybe it's some slightly different <clears throat> version of it. So, I was uh, actually interviewing someone recently for the podcast, and they work at Google, and obviously the hiring process there is is very structured and is different than a lot of um, like small medium sized businesses. But what he did was he directly reached out to a hiring manager, I think it was in Canada, and he didn't know anybody at Google, but he was looking for a very specific job. Um, and he reached out to hiring manager. He wasn't sure if it was that person or someone, someone else, but he reached out and just simply asked, could you give me a referral to apply for this job? And by doing that, he would just bypass sort of the initial resume screening stage and would immediately uh, get a call with a recruiter. And of course, for Google and many other companies, you get a referral fee, like the average is like $4,000 for a referral fee. So, and he had the right background. So he was like, yeah, sure, I'll refer you. And then he got the job. Oh, wow, great. So, so that was, yeah, that was a success story, a success story. And so, in, in that situation, like he didn't have a phone call at first or anything. He literally just like reached out to this guy on, on LinkedIn and just had this very specific request to get a referral. So, so I think that doesn't this approach also work in certain situations? No. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, so this guy, he, he reached out to someone he doesn't know. Right. And, and, uh, for mm-hmm. contact, you know, um, Another content he also didn't know about, so that's also networking, absolutely. And yeah. and um, and you know all the things that we're talk we've talked about uh, today is something you can do online. You know, I mean, I think um, yeah. we talked about phone calls and stuff, but don't get me wrong, this is not uh, you know the 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 uh, the 80s where we didn't have any computers, of course. So today, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the research, a lot of the contacts um, are, are done online. I met a um, yeah. Uh, I met a, a woman in, in Hong Kong. She was she had the basically the same job as I had for a different company. Uh, so there you go, you know, networking. We had lunch, talk about the industry and mm-hmm. so forth. And and I reached her, out to her on LinkedIn, and, and you know we, we met that way. Um, and she told me she had been hired, and this was a pretty large company. She had been hired. Um, by her boss online and started working for her boss without ever meeting her. So, yeah. so, so that's, you know, what can happen, you know, during the pandemic and maybe even also in the future. Yeah, people, that's happened a lot. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. so, so that's obviously something that's completely changed um, from, from yeah. before, you know, a lot of things happening uh, on social media and a lot of the contacts and also all the information you can get uh, about companies is all you know online all very um accessible to people which is good and um mm-hmm. and and as i totally. said initially i think linkedin still has preserved a lot of um the interest in terms of being a very professional network 
where uh, you can reach out to uh, people you don't know, and um, and and, and it, it's you still have a very high level of um, uh, positive replies. So uh, so so yeah, absolutely yeah. a very good tool. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's just a point to emphasize, especially we can talk a little bit maybe about introverts and extroverts again, but I was, what, another story I wanted to mention is I was writing blog posts and articles of, a few years ago, and I was very interested in, in crypto and blockchain. And so I was sort of compiling an article about uh, the industry, like the state of the industry. And basically, I mean, I had no credentials uh, at the time for, for crypto. I mean, I was like, you know, bought some Bitcoin and, and Ethereum. But I remember I just I just reached out to a bunch of CEOs on LinkedIn, like 40 or 50 CEOs. And like more than half of them got back to yeah, me. That's amazing. And all I said yeah. was, hey, like I just I wanna I wanna ask you three questions for this article. Right. And like everyone's happy to help. Maybe there's something about the industry where people are more friendly and you can argue that. But uh, but the reason I mention mention it is like yes, you can reach out to really senior people and like you're probably gonna get a response. Yeah. Um, not all the time. So, so I think going back to your method of, you know, reaching out to someone, having a conversation with them, not being naggy and desperate, like, Hey, I want this job, but actually saying, um, you know, this is, this is a project I'm working on. Um, what, what do you think about this as a career trajectory? Do you have any feedback? Do you have any advice for me? I really value that advice because, uh, you know, you've, you've clearly done this or you're, you know, uh, you have some credentials that, are relevant to what I'm doing. So I think that's a very indirect way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, um, yeah, so basically, uh, you know, you, you, you're opening the door and the elephant goes out, you know, and, and, and it, there's just this uh, conversation about uh, an ind industry topic that, you know, both are interested in, one with a bit more experience and one with less. And, and there you go. And, and it's, it works wonderfully well. So, uh, yeah, no, it's a good, po good point you mentioned that because, uh, once again, yes, LinkedIn really works well, and and people are just happy to to share their experience and their know how. Um, you know, obviously, uh, not any confidential information, but anything that you know that they they, they can share. That's uh, that's perfect. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, I think you're doing. Well, sorry. Before I go into that, what um what other advice or tips do you have around that? Because I think we got to the end of the referral sheet and then, you know, you, you, you want to ask those people you're talking to if they, if they have any, if they know anyone on that list, is there anything else you do no, then the, as part of that process? You know, this is a bit like, um, you know, an analogy to sales. When you, if you're a good salesman, you don't sell, but you get the other one to purchase, right? Mm -hmm. you, you get the other person to buy from you rather than you pushing a sale through. And this is the same thing here. So yeah. as, as a job seeker, you're talking about yourself, uh, you're talking about what you want to do, uh, there's an exchange with the other person. And if the other person has a need, right, they'll get to the conclusion themselves. And, you know, I can actually, you know, um, need someone like you and my team. Or, you know, I, I like your personality. I think we could do something uh, nice together. They might even propose you another job than the one you're actually pitching for. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that, that's, I've heard a lot of stories about that as well, just because, you know, for a company, um, there's what they put in the, uh, uh, you know, in the job description, right? But that's only, mm -hmm. you know, half or something or what, or what they actually want. So they have what they need in the yeah. job description. And then there's what do we really want as a company? And, and you know, I've, yeah. I've also done a lot of research on, what um, millennials and and uh, and uh, Gen Gen Z what they want uh, in, in a job and in the company, mm -hmm. and the number one thing is purpose. Okay, so mm -hmm. you want as a job seeker, you want to work in a company uh, where your values can be aligned with the company values, all right, mm -hmm. um, or vice versa. The company values need to be aligned with yours. So. Um, and, and, and if that's the case, uh, you'll be, you know, 100% engaged in your job. You'll be motivated to go to, to work every morning because you do, you know, mm -hmm. you, you're feeling you're doing the right thing. Okay. And if that also comes through in the conversation with that person, uh, that's, a, that's a big, big, uh, you know, added value as a, as a future employee 
if um, if uh, that company leader sees you as someone perfectly aligned with the company purpose and is going to be you know charging ahead and and and, and then people don't count the hours and, and the effort to 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 work when they like what they do you know so when when this and yeah. this is only something you can find out in networking you can't do that uh, on social media or more difficult it's more difficult so that that personal fit with a person and don't forget we're talking about you have to take contact with people you're going to work for. I know there's a um, lot of mottos, uh, you know, you see on, on LinkedIn or social media, where, you know, about you know work and you know being happy at work. And one of them is um, you don't leave a company, you leave a bad boss, right? Um, right. And, yeah. And and and, and the other it's, it goes also the other way, you know, you you have to work for a good boss rather than work for this or that company, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Well, of course, some at the beginning of your um, career, uh, that's maybe another piece of advice, not directly linked to networking, but it's good to have that, you know the yeah. uh, the um, uh, the big names, you know, in the industry, Amazon or Google or whatever, you know, even if you you know mm -hmm. it's 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 might be very nice to live to to work there, or you find it uh, you know very painful, but it's a good place to have like uh, you know to have it on your CV. Uh, to start there, and you, yeah, you, you, you will learn a lot of things. So, so it's good to take that, uh, you know, uh, on the way to to on your career. But, um, but yeah, but but mm. that fit with that other person that's that's important, and that's something you can really um, uh, get hold of in that uh, in that uh, discussion, you know, personal discussion. Yeah, that that makes sense. Uh, you were saying something about <clears throat> the survey. I think that you were talking about where a lot of Gen Z are like yeah. really purpose driven, focused on purpose driven companies, and I'm wondering if you've coached any anyone ar around that and and sort of what what that's like because my uh, my experience is that you can look at a company and and like you just said the boss is very important. I'm gonna be totally unrelated to the purpose and the direction of the company, right? You could actually work for a tobacco company. I mean, that's a terrible example because maybe you feel really bad <laughs> yeah, about it. No one wants there. to work there anymore. <laughs> but, but you, no one wants to work there anymore. Uh, I, I just actually met someone that works at a tobacco company and she's going to leave. But I think what I was trying to say is you could have a really great boss at, you know, you could work at uh, whatever, some tobacco company, have a really great boss, um, have good pay, and actually be in a role that is intrinsically motivating for you where you enjoy the work itself and it's completely not purpose driven at all it's it's actually the opposite and maybe yeah you wake up every every week or every month like man i don't really feel good about this but then i think that's an extreme case i think most companies are not like that and um on the other end you can work for a very purpose-driven company but have a terrible boss you know you can work for an mpo have terrible pay you know boss that has no management experience and you know uh, in a role that is is not at all what you signed up for and so I think the purpose, of course, is very important. I'm really interested in that survey you mentioned, but it's it's just really like one of the factors. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there are you know other other things as well. Um, but so you know when when you uh, if you're asking yourself question, questions about you know what what career to to choose or if you know what you want, but you you might have other questions, right? You know. Am I the right person for this? Or maybe you want also to make one step up, you know, to to um, uh, in terms of the, the the responsibilities. Maybe start managing people or managing a bigger team than what you, you're doing now. Whatever, you know, going a little bit up in seniority, uh, and you may start to feel that oh, you know, I'm am I up to this? Do I have uh, you know? Do I have executive presence or or maybe not executive, but do you have you know? Do I have uh, the management um, uh, capabilities to, to to handle that kind of challenge? Um, then it's good to uh, to talk to a coach that can um, help you get where you want to be. Right? That's that's what coaches do. Um, you know, mm -hmm. people, uh, not only myself, obviously, but you know, anyone that has uh, credentials as a coach, as a professional coach, would be able to help people. Uh, develop themselves. So basically, we're helping people to, you know, to to uh, un unlock potential, 
and uh, mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know get ahead where where people want to be. So so that's uh, that's a very cool Absolutely, thing to do. Yeah. I think to you know, be able to help people like this. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, and and I and I think on on the coaching side, and it's something something I've I've said a few times before, but. Uh, you know, coaching can be very, very fluffy. And I think if you, you know, like, let's say you're looking for a life coach and, you know, you're going to find like a 23 year old life coach and, and, you know, you're, you're 45, you've got two kids, like what, what is this 23 year old life coach going to, going to really teach you? So I think there is something really powerful about, you know, talking to someone that has the actual experience uh, under their belt, not necessarily a mentor, not necessarily someone that you want to be like, I think that's separate, but at least someone that can draw upon that experience and be like, yeah, like I manage a team of 200 people and I live in these different countries and I've helped, you know, different people find jobs. And so like you have that experience and I think not, not just you, but yeah, just, just like speaking more yeah, generally, absolutely. I think that's, absolutely. that's just no, a it's sign a, it's of, a, good point of a, good, because a good coach. Um, there's still a lot of um, <clears throat> misunderstanding about what a coach is and what a coach does. Um, it has a little mm-hmm. bit to do maybe with the word, which is, you know, similar as, you know, for uh, sport coaches and, and people think that you know a coach teaches uh, something to someone, but that's not the case. So a a professional um, career coach will, as I said, help unlock a potential and and get rid of your fears um, and and help you to uh, you know get to another level, basically in in your professional life. So so it builds upon. What's already there in the in in the person uh, the, that I'm coaching, um, and of course, what I bring then is a certain um, uh, yeah. There's there's a kind of um, uh, you know wisdom without being too uh, arrogant about about myself, but uh, you know simply the fact that you know I've I've, I've lived a good life and had a, a nice career and and. Um, so yeah, so um, someone who's um, uh, you can rely upon. And basically, what my clients say is that you know they feel safe, uh, they feel secure when they're in, uh, together, and um, they can you know they can trust uh, trust me, and that's you know that's mm-hmm. a, a key point when you want to talk to a coach. For sure, for sure. And you you said one thing that a, a coach's job is not really to teach and. And I agree with that, right? They're not giving you a course necessarily and, and all of this. But at the same time, I would still say, like our conversation today, for example, you have all this knowledge and you're basically like teaching this process of how to reach out to someone and, and network with them. So, I mean, like that's basically something you can absolutely, teach in coaching. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so that it goes for, for the topic of today and anything linked to, you know, team management and... Uh, and uh, and what you do as as uh, as an executive, which I've uh, you know had the pleasure of doing for for many years. So yeah, anything related to that, and and from the you know I, I started at the bottom myself, like everyone does. So um, I still remember the yeah. young days, and, and and you know my our networking talk today was based on something I did when I was you know barely thirty years old. So so uh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, no, I I really appreciate it. I think. I think that's a, a good place to to wrap up. Uh, I will, of course, yeah, link back to your site and and your coaching profile and everything. Thanks. Is there any yeah? Is there anything else that you wanted to share before we wrap up, or anything else at all? You know, um, <clears throat> my 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 mission uh, today is to to help people uh, be happy at work, basically. Uh, you remember Simon uh, Sinek, you know the the why. So my why is to yeah, to, the why yeah, guy. exactly the why guy. So um, you know my why is to uh, to make the world a better place, uh, or met, make the, the the work world a better place. Um, so because there is a lot of unnecessary suffering and tension and 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 uh, uh, in in at work, and I believe you know it's not necessary. It can be difficult, but it's very simple to find, you know, the right place place for yourself and have a career that's fulfilling and that, you know, meets all the criteria, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, revenues, uh, challenges, uh, fulfillment. Hmm. Um, but it, yeah, it, sometimes you, you need, a, a, you know, a, someone to, to follow you on the way and, and support you. 
And uh, so if anyone's interested, uh, you know, I'm just a, just a short call away and uh, we can have a, have a chat about that. Awesome, Arne. Well, well, thank you so much for the conversation today. I really had a lot of fun and uh, yeah, maybe we can do it again sometime. Uh, with pleasure. Sure. Thanks, Misha, for having me and um, wishing you, everyone, uh, a great career ahead. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Well, that about wraps it up for today. So I hope you enjoyed the conversation and found it useful, insightful, maybe surprising. I don't know. But uh, hopefully you could use some of that in your networking or to become to become a better networker for your job search. I will link back to Arne's coaching profile. So if you want to have a quick chat with him, then I definitely recommend reaching out and figuring out how you can apply this technique to uh, your job search or, or just, uh, yeah, just, just to become a better networker. So he's uh, obviously a great, great guy to talk to about that. I would love to hear your feedback. If you have any feedback, questions, comments, I will actually leave my email, which I'm going to start doing from now on in the comments Uh, show notes section and you can reach out to me there and if you haven't hit subscribe then please please do that to get the latest episodes well i think that's about it for me so hope you have a great rest of the week and i'll see you next time